well again we are here by god's grace remember the words of our lord and savior jesus christ when he said that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god and so today we are sitting here to feast and uh, just to be addicted to his word as we just look at it and uh, you know read through the book of first samuel chapter number 14 all the way to chapter number 15 and I believe that there is a Lord, a Lord, a Lord of scriptures here for us today that are containing great and great and great revelation for us to learn and, uh, and practice in our life so that we can become effective believers as we follow after our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. So once again, welcome to Ad Addiction. This is your host, Reverend Lawrence Makumbi from Lifeful Chapel Kitengala, the House of Faith. So why don't you begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and we honor you. We are glad and we are honored to sit at your feet and to feast at your table. Lord, I pray that today, as we look through the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 14, all through to chapter number 15, that Jehovah Father, the revelation in your word shall have an impact to our souls for the glory and the honor of your holy name. Spirit of the living God, you are the author and the revealer of the same word. May you reveal this word to us that today, that the God of all heaven shall be glorified as his children are feasting from the revelation that arise from the scriptures. We honor you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we do trust, praying, and believing. Amen. First Samuel chapter number 14, verses 1. Now it happened with Jonathan, the son of Saul, Say to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was sitting in the outcasts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree which is in Migron. The people who were with him were about 600 men. Ahijah, the son of Ahitab, Ichabod's brother, the son of Phineas, the son of Eli. The Lord's priest in Shiloh was wearing an ephod. But the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. So between the, pass, uh, between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Bozes, and the name of the other was Sina. The front of one faced uh, the front of one faced north northward opposite Mikmash, and the other southward southward sorry opposite Gibeah. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, "Come, let us go over to the garrison of this uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many." or by few so here we see jonathan uh you know decides just to take a uh, a trip towards the philistines garrison and as he goes there he just goes with his um armor bearer and as he's going with the armor bearer he, he he tells the armor bearer you know what let us get in though we are few in number we never know because the lord can save by many or the lord can save by few it just pleases the Lord. Whoever he says, I'm going to give victory to, whether they are the bigger number, the larger number, or the smaller number, if God has said victory is for the many, victory will be for the many. If he says victory is for the few, then victory is going to be uh, uh, for, for the few. You know, most of the times we limit God because either you feel, I don't have the enough resources to do such and such thing, I don't have enough faith to do such and such, uh, such thing. That's why Jesus Christ said, if you just have faith as little as a mustard uh, uh, a seed, you can say to this mountain, that is in Mark chapter number 11, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and so shall it be. So Jesus Christ is telling it, you know what, you don't have to gather great faith. For you to move with God, for you to operate with God, you don't have to have this great and humongous faith. Start with God from where you are. That just, just says, if you just have the faith as small as a mustard seed. Because he says, 
faith has got potency, no matter how small it is. So Jonathan discovers, do you know what? We, let us go to the army, to the garrisons of the children of uh, Philistine. And when he's there with just his armor bearer, he says, do you know what? Let us go. We don't know if the Lord, may, maybe perhaps God, God has got the authority to give us victory, and he can give victory to a multitude of thousands and upon tens of thousands of people, but he can also choose to, to, to use just a few people to drive out his enemies. Then Jonathan, Jonathan say, uh, said to the young man, Ubo Izama, let us go over to the garrison of this uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. Verse 7. So his armor bearer said to him, do all, that is in, do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to your heart. Here we see that Jonathan, uh, he had a partner in his armor bearer. His armor bearer trusted him. His armor bearer believed in his capacity and in his ability. So the young man said to him, do you know what? You just go. Do what is in your heart. If you do what is in your heart, then I'm, you're sure that I'm going to be with you. May God give you people who will believe in you. Are you a pastor? Are you a leader? Are you a person who's going to start a business? You want to become an entrepreneur? You want to start a business? You want to start, uh, uh, start what people call a side hustle? May God grant you people who will believe in you. Every vision for it to be fulfilled, it must attract people who believe in you. Everywhere, everywhere you go, God must be able to raise up people who believe in you. Jesus Christ himself had to have 12 men around him and women also around him. The Bible talks about the noble women who, who, who used to follow Christ. These were people who believed in him, people who believed in his vision. David, in the same way, when we come to study the story of David, you will see that God gave him a vagabonds who later became, you know, men of valor, people who believed in him, people who trusted in him. May God grant you the same. People who trust and believe in your capacity and in your, in your ability to fulfill the vision that God has entrusted in your life. Verses 8, Then Jonathan said, Very well, let us cross over to these men and we will show ourselves to them. If they say thus to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say thus, come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hands, and this will be a sign to us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have eaten. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us and we will show you something. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up on his hand and knees, uh, and knees with his armor bearers after him, and they fell, uh, uh, and they fell before Jonathan. And as he came after him, his armor bearer killed them. That first slaughter with Jonathan and his armor bearer made about 20 men within about half an acre of land. And there was trembling in the camp in the, fi in the, camp, in the field and amongst the people. The garrison and the raiders also trembled and the earth quaked. So that it was a very great trembling. Now the watchmen of Saul in Gibeah of Benjamin looked and there was the multitude melting away and they went there and they went here and there. Then Saul said to the people who were with him, Now call the roll and see who has gone from us. And when they had, and they had called the roll, surprisingly, Jonathan and his army bearer were not there. And Saul said to Ahijah, Bring the ark of God here. For at that time the ark of God was with the children of Israel. Now it happened when Saul talked to the priest that the noise which was in the camp of the Philistines continued to increase. So Saul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. Uh, withdraw your hand. 
Then Saul and all the people who were with him assembled, and they went to, uh, to the battle. And indeed, every man's sword was against his neighbor, and there was very great confusion. Moreover, the Hebrews who were with the Philistines, uh, the Hebrews who were with the Philistines before that time, who went up with them into the camp from the surrounding country, they also joined the Israelites who were with Saul and uh, Jonathan. Likewise, all the men of Israel who had hidden in the mountains of Ephraim, Ephraim, when they heard that the Philistines fled, they also followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle shifted to Beth Aven. So here we see that Jonathan, Jonathan sorry, decides with his armor bearer, let us go. If the Philistines tell us, stand where, where, where you are, we are coming for you, then we will know that this battle is not for us. But if they are there to tell us, come up where we are, we will know that the Lord has delivered them to us. And it happens that the Philistines tell them, do you know what? You come where we are. And Jonathan tells the armor bearer, let us go. For the Lord has delivered the Philistines to us. And guess what? As they just take that step, that day, that, that place in a space of about half an acre, 20 men of the people of Philistines were defeated or were, were murdered or they were killed by the armor bearer of, of Jonathan. And so it happened that the Lord used that event to cause a commotion and a confusion in the garrison of the Philistines. And it happened also as that is happening, the Lord begins to draw others, uh, people from the nation of Israel, people who are uh, the army that were, that were together with Saul. They, feel, they have a sense of confidence and the Lord delivers them to uh, the, brings them to this field and he makes sure that the Philistines have been defeated before the children of uh, Israel. What does this uh, teach us? There are moments in life, listen, there are moments in life that you will not have to wait for people to join you, that you will not have to wait for a great multitude to join you. Every vision starts small, but as it progresses, as the leader believes in it, you know, it begins to attract others uh, uh, on, on your side. So, you know, do you want to start a business? Don't, don't wait until you get these big, you know, suppliers to be on your favor. No, just start small. As you start small and you believe in your dream, you believe in your vision, you're pursuing your destiny with everything that counts, guess what? God will begin to... To bring people who will get attached to you and people who will give everything to see that that vision has been fulfilled. May that be your portion today in a Jesus mighty name. Verses 24. And then the men of Israel were distressed that day. For Saul had placed the people under oath as saying, Cast is the man who eats any food until evening. Before I have taken vengeance on my enemies. So none of the people tasted food. Now all the people of the land came to a forest, and there was honey on the ground. And when the people had come into the woods, uh, woods there was the honey dripping, but no one put his hand to it to his mouth. For the people feared the oath. But Jonathan had not had his father, his father charge the people with the oath. Therefore he stretched out the end of the road, that was in the hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put it and, and put his hand uh, on his mouth and his countenance brightened. Then one of the people said, Your father strictly charged the people with an oath, saying, Cursed is the man who eats food this day, and the people were faint. But Jonathan said, My father's troubled the land. Look now. How my countenance has brightened because I tasted a little of the honey. How much better if the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies which they found. For now, for now will there not have been much greater slaughter amongst the Philistines? So, you know, Saul decides, you know what, today nobody is going to eat. By my word, and if anybody dares, dares to eat anything, that man is a curse and they should die. But Jonathan was not there when the, when the oath was being made or when the curse was being uh, pronounced. So Jonathan comes into the forest and discovers, you know what? Wow, there is honey here. It 
takes the stick, just touches the honeycomb, and puts, and he discovers, wow, this thing is so sweet. I feel energized. I feel as if I have taken some energy drink, you know. And the people look at him and now pronounce, listen, Jonathan, we cannot have any of that, and you should not have taken that, because your father's soul had made us to make an oath that none of us shall eat this thing. And Jonathan discovers, you know what, my father is erratic. He just makes decisions. And listen, if he had not just done this, how much more would have the slaughter been against the people of Philistines? Verses 31. Now they had driven back the Philistines that day from Michmash to Aijalon. So the people were very faint. And the people rushed to the spoil and took sheep, oxen, and calves and slaughter them on the ground, and the people ate them with the blood. Then they told Saul, saying, Look, the people are sinning against the Lord by eating with the blood. So he said, You have dealt treacherously. Roll a large stone to me this day. Then Saul said, Disperse yourselves amongst the people, and say to them, Bring me here every man's ox and every man's sheep. Slaughter them here and eat, and do not sin against the Lord by eating with the blood. So every one of the people brought his ox with him that night and slaughtered it there. Then, Sa then Saul built an altar to the Lord. This was the first altar that he built to the Lord. Now Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night and plunder them until the morning light. Let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. Then the priest said, let us draw near to God here. So Saul asked counsel of God, shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him that day. Saul said, come over here, all you chiefs of the people, and, and, and know and see what this sin was today. For as the Lord lives, who saves Israel, so it be in Jonathan, my son, he shall surely die. But not a man among all the people answered him. Then he said to all Israel, You be on one, on one side, and my son Jonathan and I be on the other side. So here Saul discovers, do you know what? Number one, uh, the people have had a, a victory in the, in the first battle of the day, and uh, they get the spoils, and it's time uh, to, 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 to open that fast that Saul had, de had declared. And because the people were tired and the people were so, 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 so hungry, they dis decided, you know what? Let us slaughter these ox. Let us slaughter these sheep. Let us just eat them with the blood on. And when Saul was told of this, he gets so uh, 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 grieved. And he said, well, these people making us to sin against the Lord. And so he tells them, do you know what? You come and slaughter here. Every man with his ox, every man with his sheep, Make sure that none of you is eating, uh, 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 you know, the meat with blood on. Because this is something that God had forbidden them in the book of Leviticus and in the early laws. He told them nobody should ever eat, you know, uh, an animal with its blood because the life of the creature is in its blood. And so they come and they eat there. And so Saul decides, you know what, let us continue pursuing the, the Philistines. And he builds an altar there. And he tells the priest, you come and inquire from the Lord for me. And that day, the Lord never spoke. So Saul was like, what has happened that the Lord is silent to us? Who has sinned? He calls the chiefs of the people and the chiefs of the people are silent. And he said, come, come, come before me. Even if it is Jonathan who has sinned, he will surely die. Let the Lord judge. And the people were quiet. None of them told them anything. So he says, do you know what? Let me and my son Jonathan be on one side and let the chiefs of the children of Israel be on the other side. And let us see as we cast the lot before the Lord where the Lord shall fall. And the people said to Saul, do what seems good to you, verses 41. Therefore Saul said to the Lord God of Israel, give a perfect, give a perfect lot. So Saul and Jonathan were taken by the people escaped. And Saul said, 
cast lots between my son Jonathan and me. So Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, tell me what you have done. And Jonathan told him, and I said, I only tested a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand. So now I must die. Saul answered, God do so, so, and more also, for you shall surely die, Jonathan. But the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who has accomplished this great deliverance in Israel? Certainly not. As the Lord lives, not one hair of his head shall fall to the ground, for he has worked with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, and he did not die. Then Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. So they go before the presence of God, and Saul and Jonathan have been, uh, have been chosen. The, lost, the Lord falls upon them. And then Saul says, do you know what God choose? Just show between me and Jonathan who has sinned. And God chooses Jonathan. And so jo Saul tells Jonathan, can you please tell me, what have you done this day? And Jonathan said, you know, I just tested a little, and I did just this, I just tested. And God, Saul says, you will surely die. But when the people heard this, they said, you know what? Jonathan has made a great victory for us today. How can he die seeing that Jonathan has worked with God? And this thing, you know, took Saul off balance. And he could not make the decision of killing Jonathan. Listen, the Lord is so uh, sensitive when people give an oath or make a vow. That's in Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 we read the other day. That he says, don't be in a rush to make a vow. Don't be in a rush to make a promise before God or to take an oath before God. Because God holds our vows and our oaths very, very seriously. So even though Saul made it rashly, God was watching to see, will you fulfill the vow or the oath that you have made, even though it is your son. But because God again is a gracious God, he puts it in the hearts of the chiefs and the hearts of the people of Israel to say, do you know what? Number one, let Jonathan not die, because they knew that Jonathan had did know about the oath. He was not there. Number two, they knew that God had worked with Jonathan to deliver the Philistines over to the children of Israel. So they said, you know what? We cannot kill Jonathan. Seeing that he has worked with God. That's the benefit of working with God. There are things that you will escape in life. There are things that you will do mistakenly and they were supposed to push you over. They are supposed to destroy you. But because you did them, subconsciously and without prayer knowledge, the Lord will preserve you. When you walk with God closely, God preserves you. Jonathan walked with God. Jonathan walked with God closely. And so the Lord used the people to rescue Jonathan from the outrageous, quick and fast oath that his father Saul had made. Verses 47. So Saul established his sovereignty over Israel and fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab and the people of Ammon, against Edom and, the, and against the kings of Zobah, and uh, against the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he harassed them, and he gathered an army and attacked the Amalekites and delivered Israel from the hands of those who plundered them. The sons of Saul were Jonathan, Jeshui and Malishua. And the names of his daughters were these. The name of the firstborn was Mirab, and the name of the younger was Michal. The name of Saul's wife was Ahinoham, and the daughter of, Ami, uh, and the daughter of Ahimaz. And the name of the commander of his army was Abna, the son of Nir, Saul's uncle. Kish was the father of Saul, and Nir, the father of Abna, was the son of Abiel. Now there, were, uh, now there was a fierce war with the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he took him for himself. So here we see that Saul 
continues to wage war against the terri- against the people in their territories and that the lord has given me, given him you know victory upon victory and upon victory and so Saul decided you know what i'm going to have a strategy that every strong man i see i will take him and he will be part of me so he's trying to build a strong army so that he can continue becoming victorious every single day of his life and this should be a lesson for us as well you know never fight the strong when you see a gifted person don't be jealous about them build a relationship with them life is about relationship destinies are met by people who treasure relationship don't be a fool when it comes to building relationship build relationships that count build relationships that are honorable build relationships that are god ordained have the spirit of discernment whenever you're building a relationship remember your net worth is your your network is your net worth the people you surround yourself with have got the ability of pushing you towards what god has called you and there are people that you can get joined to and they destroy entirely your life you must have the spirit of discernment to discern to know to realize the people that you've surrounded yourself with chapter 15 verses 1 someone also said to Saul the lord sent me to uh, to anoint you king over his people over israel now therefore heed the voice of the uh, voice of the words of the lord that says the lord of hosts i will punish amalek for what he did to israel how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from egypt now go and attack amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them but kill both man and woman infant and nursing child ox and a sheep camel and donkey so Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim 200,000 foot soldiers and 10,000 men of Judah and Saul came to a city of Amalek and lay in wait in the valley then Saul said to the uh, to the Kenites go depart get down from amongst the Amalekites lest i destroy you with them for you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt so the Kenites departed from amongst the Amalekites and Saul attacked the Amalekites from Avila all the way to Shur which is in the east of Egypt he also took Agag king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword and the Saul and the people spared Agag Agag and the best of the sheep the oxen the fatlings the lambs and all that was good and we are unwilling to utterly destroy them but everything uh, but uh, but everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed so here some uh, soul uh, some sorry Samuel comes to the king Saul and he tells him do you know what the lord has chosen you king over israel but this time i want you to be so careful i want you to obey the voice of the lord the word of the lord to you And so Saul says, "You know what? I'm ready to listen." And Samuel tells him, "Listen. The Lord has commanded you to go and war against Amalek or the Amalekites. And as you fight against the Amalekites, this is what I want you to do. This is what the Lord says or instructs you to do. When you go there, kill everybody from the king to the least. From every animal, from the biggest, the camel to the sheep kill all of them destroy them that was the word of the lord and so Saul arises and he goes with over 200,000 men to fight in this battle and so he makes a warning to the people of uh uh to uh he makes a warning sorry to the uh, uh to the people who are living with the Amalekites and he tells them listen you Kenites I want you to come out of the Amalekites because we are going to destroy them and because you showed kindness to us when we were living in Egypt that's the reason why I'm preserving you but the Amalekites they have been so have been instructed destroy them 
And this is the reason that you're going to destroy them. They never showed kindness to the children of Israel when they were weak and coming from the land of Egypt. They ambushed them and they fought them. And remember that day the Lord granted them victory because Moses and Aaron and U and Joshua worked together. When Joshua was fighting the people on the field, Moses was lifting up his hands, assisted by Aaron and U uh, and, 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 and Ur. And God gave them victory. But God never forgot. Because they attacked Israel when they were vulnerable. God made a vow that is going to destroy the people of Oman. Now when Saul is in the seat, the chosen king of Israel, and is winning battles against the Philistines, against the people of Ammon, against the people of Edom, God says to him, now because you are at the peak of your battle strength, I want you to destroy the Amalekites since that they never gave space for the children of Israel, but they ambushed them. So Saul says, yes, let us go. They go. The first thing he does, he preserves King Agag. The second thing he does is that he takes everything that is worth him and keeps, them, keeps it for them. Uh, they keep it for themselves. And anything that is meaningless and anything that is not of worth, they destroy. God is watching. Now verses 10. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me. In other words, God says, you know what? I loathe. I, I, I hate. I, I feel betrayed by Saul. I anointed him king over Israel. I chose him king over Israel. But he does not obey my word. I regret choosing him as a king over Israel. And has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried out to the Lord all night. Look at the voice of a, Look at the heart of a leader. He sees that God has re regretted Saul because Saul has, has regretted his word. And how does Samuel react? He does not say, wow, praise you, God. You are going to destroy the king of Israel. You have, re you have rejected him. Samuel listens to this and he goes before the presence of God and he cries. That entire night shows us. He cries with a heavy heart. Wondering, God, how did this come to happen that Saul rejected obeying your decree? Verse 12. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel saying, Saul went to, Car to Carmel and indeed he set up a monument for himself and he has gone on uh, on around passed by and gone down to Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of sheep, of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them, the, uh, uh, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said to Saul, Be quiet. Shh, shh. And I will let you, and I will tell you, sorry, what the Lord said to me last night. In other words, don't play righteous here, Saul. Let me just speak to you what the Lord delivered to me last night. And he said to him, speak on, speak on. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not the head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Now when did you, when, when, why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil 
and do evil in the sight of the Lord. And, the, and Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone to the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, king of Amalek, and they have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the, plum, of the plunder, sheep and oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. So Samuel said, as the Lord has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being a king over Israel. So Samuel, Saul tries to justify his actions by saying, you know what, we've gone to battle. We have taken captives, captive of the king of the Amalekites, Agag. We have utterly destroyed everything. The only thing that we have kept for us for, for uh, uh, out is the top cream de la cream of the animals that we may offer as a sacrifice to the Lord. So Saul asked, as Samuel asked Saul sincerely, does the Lord delight in sacrifices more than in obedience? Because Saul thought, you know what, sacrificing to God is the up, upmost thing. It's the best thing that I can do. And remember what they are going to sacrifice? It is something that God had considered dead. It is something that God had, re, uh, had considered rejected. It is not something, if, if it was sacrifice, God would have said, spare for me. But God had this memory that these people, they are the ones that attacked my firstborn when they came from Egypt. These people don't deserve to live. Neither is their property. Neither does their property deserve to live. Let them entirely be destroyed. But Saul was of a different opinion. That God was a greedy God who just wanted sacrifices upon sacrifices and nothing to do with obedience. He was wrong. Samuel proved him and told him, you are wrong. The Lord does not delight in sacrifices more than in obedience. He says to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. How many times has the Lord told you it is wrong to do A, B, C, D? But the society tells you it is not that bad. You know the sin of disobedience it is it is it is, it is what actually the enemy uses to destroy humanity. He makes a man doubt what God has said in his word. When God told uh, Adam the first sin, God told Adam, listen Adam, you should not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the ground. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The enemy came and told Adam, listen Adam, you will not surely die. God knows if you eat, you will become like him and you will know everything. What did the enemy do? If you go back to Genesis uh, chapter number 3, you will see. I think that was our first broadcast. You will see that the enemy's work is to make sure that you can just doubt what God has said. If, you can just, if he can make you just doubt what God has said, he knows that he has created enmity between you and your God. And he can buffet you the way he wants. When God has said something, don't look it from the point of the word. If God says, forgive your enemies, love them, pray for them, don't go the world way and say, you know what, I will revenge for them. I will revenge to them. They will know that I will do this. I will. If God just says, love them, do what God says. 
Don't let the enemy pervert the word of God and make you doubt it. The word of God is your life. That's why Christ reminds us of what God says in the book of Deuteronomy by saying, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, God wants you to obey him every single day of your life. Have you noticed a place that you've not obeyed God? Go back and make a repentance and a turn around and go back and obey what God has called you to do. Even better, always pray that the grace that God has revealed to you, in that grace you will live a life that honors God. It is the grace that teaches us to say no to all ungodliness. It is that grace that enables you to obey God in your life. Verses 24. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me, that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. And as Samuel turned around to go away, Saul seized the edge of his robe, and it tore. So Samuel said to him, the Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to a neighbor of yours who is better than you. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor relent for he is not a man and he should not relent. That he should not relent. Then he said, I have sinned yet, I have sinned yet honor me now. Please before the elders of my people and before Israel and return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. Then Samuel said, Bring Agag, king of the Amalekites, here to me. So Agag came to him uh, uh, cautiously, and Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, As your sword has made women child childless, so shall your mother be childless amongst women. And Samuel hacked Agag in pieces, before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel went, to more, uh, went no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul a king over Israel. So here Saul says, you know what, even though God has rejected me, please Samuel, Please, Prophet Samuel, just honor me this one more time. Allow me to go back to the place of worship and sacrifice before the people of Israel. Let them not know that God has rejected. That's what he was trying to say. Just please go with me. Let the people think that I'm still in tune with God. Honor me with your presence, man of God, please. And Samuel said, let us go. When they get there, Samuel does what Saul was, not an, was unable to do. He says, bring Agagia. And he tells him, listen. You have made a lot of mothers be childless. Today, your mother shall be childless. And he, just, he, does, he does not just kill him, but he hacks him. He's so brutal. So that the people of Israel may know what God had intended to be done. That's the work, you know, God gave Samuel as a leader. To make sure as a prophet, that Saul and the children of Israel are there to obey God to the letter. Samuel knew from a very tender age what it meant to disobey the decrees of God. And he saw it in the life of Eli and his sons. He saw how disobedience to the laws of God made Eli and his children to be rejected by God. And so he was so because he's the one who delivered that message. Remember, when he was a young boy, he is the one who is the one who delivered the message that the sons of Eli are going to die. And it was so. So Samuel knew, you saw, you have rejected God's word. You don't know what it means. You don't know how God values his word. And he says that Samuel never returned to Saul again as he 
will lead them. He said, you know what? I'm not going to associate with a man that God has rejected. Praise be the name of the living God. We've come to the end of our reading of the word today. And uh, I pray that the word that we've read shall come alive in your own, you know, journey of leadership and doing things. That when God has op- commanded you to do something, obey it to the letter. Be so sensitive to hear what God says and obey him. Don't be rash like Saul to make oaths and make people, you know, uh, uh, declare oaths in their lives. Don't be, don't rush to make vows and cause people to make oaths. Be calculating, be sensitive to the leadings of God and God shall be with you. Praise be the name of the living God. We've come again to the end of our reading today and I pray as you log out, May the good God cause people to come to your help and aid so that you can fulfill the vision and the assignment or the mandate that God has commanded over your life. He is a faithful God. When you show yourself faithful, you will experience his goodness in a manner that you have never seen it before. And that's, may, may that be your portion because that's my prayer for all of us today. For Kingdom Advancement Giving, the number is 9522737. The TIL number is 9522737. And as you continue to give, may the Lord richly, richly bless and increase you in Jesus' mighty name. I declare that the rest of your day is blessed. I declare that your every activity is blessed. I declare that you are a victor and not a victim. You are the head and not the tail. May the Lord, Lord turn his face towards you. May the rest of this day be a day that will attract goodness and mercies over your life in Jesus' name. Let's meet tomorrow at uh, uh, same time in God's presence as we tackle First uh, Samuel chapter number 16 and chapters number 17. May God richly bless you.